All right, Eric, we've made it finally to topic 12 in the pursuit. So we've talked about the why, the what, and uh, this topic number 12 should be the most obvious of all the topics we've ever done because it's about how to make disciples using PursueGod.org. And you've just spent more than 12 weeks doing it with me. So in theory, this should all be review, but I think it's still going to feel a little bit like I think there's still going to be some light bulbs going on for both of us as we talk through some of this, right? And as you're thinking about, I want you to remember to be thinking about doing it with somebody else, not just thinking about how I've done this with you. But, you know, the whole point was I'm going to disciple you in a reproducible way so that you can disciple Tanner in a reproducible way so that Tanner in a few weeks, you're going to be doing this topic with him so that he can disciple someone else in a reproducible way so that it doesn't just stop with us, but that we're making disciple makers, not just disciples, but disciple makers, right? So we've talked about, let's just kind of, what I, I think this might be good for you to just real quick explain these three E's, engage, establish, and empower, right? Let's talk through the engage stage, and it might be even good to, for us to talk about it in our relationship, to kind of take this framework and say, okay, wait, how did I do this? How did, how did Brian do this with me? And maybe talk about it in the relationship, your relationship with Tanner as well. Cause we kind of short circuited it a little bit with Tanner, right? Yeah. So, uh, the three E's engage, establish, empower. Um, to be honest, I kind of skipped over this one. Cause hmm. if you remember, I said, Hey, let's get together. And we jumped into the pursuit right away. I think, right? Truth, truth be told, yes, we did. So I'm confessing that. It's not a yeah. sin necessarily, okay. but I am confessing it because I want to make sure that you that you understand that it doesn't these these all of these these are like diff, the three different phases, right? The engage phase, you might be engaging a neighbor for years before they ever are even ready to go through the pursuit with you. Yeah. Right? It's true. That's true. Um, my neighbor across the street, we um, were this in the second state that we've lived in, in the same neighborhood. Wow. And we're still only in the engage because there aren't believers. Right. So and so you might even use some topics from Flex Talk or from Pursue God from time to time. If you feel like it's not too awkward to do that, you might share like a parenting topic that is engaging to them and say, Hey, if you want to talk about it over coffee, let me know. I'm I'm here for you. You're showing you're showing him that you care about him. You're showing him that you don't just care about him spiritually, but you show you show that you're showing that you care about him in every way, right? For sure. But then at some point we move to the established phase and so you and I move to that right away and you know 12 weeks later we're well, I'm just about ready to send you out. Well, I've already kind of empowered you because you because you're discipling tanner now but let's do that okay eric so think about tanner you picked him up what was it i i invited you in at week four i think yeah right? yeah so i was doing the pursuit with tanner and i did engage him with some marriage topics because he's getting married but then i but then we jumped into the pursuit pretty quickly and and so then i invited you in and I'm kind of pulling the curtain back a little right here. Yeah, I yeah. you in because I wanted to make sure to empower you. And I'm like, this is a great opportunity to connect Eric to Tanner. So you you sat, you sat led, let's say, I think I led topic four and you watched. Yep. And I think if I remember, I had you lead topic five and six and I watched. Yep. And then I said, hey, Eric, why don't you finish the pursuit with Tanner he was good with it. You were good with it. And so in a sense, I've already empowered you. You're already discipling him through the pursuit. We're just a couple of weeks ahead. You and I doing the pursuit are only a couple of weeks ahead of, of you and him doing the pursuit. And my hope is that you will empower Tanner in a similar way. You might have to help get him connected to somebody. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because he, he, might, he might not be like you who you're going to go reach someone in the grocery store uh true uh, and listen don't uh the people that are watching this don't get the idea that the first time that i jumped into a topic 
Well, Brian can maybe smile. We'll joke about this later on. But the first time I came prepared to do a topic, I had like an outline. It was like, <laughs> like I was getting ready to like do a sermon or something. I'm not a preacher, but I was like, I was getting ready to do a sermon. So then, uh, and it went, so it was like super like checkbox, checkbox, checkbox. Yeah. Uh, but the next, you know, Brian, but the next week was so much more chill. It just, it was, it was, um, it was more natural, which is what this is supposed to be fluid and natural and yeah um, you care well, it was because if you remember eric i'm glad you brought that up i forgot about that but you're right it was because you kind of when you think about discipling someone you th and a lot of people in training watching this are probably thinking the same thing you're like i don't i'm not a bible answer man i can't i wouldn't i can't write a sermon and we're yeah. not asking you to write a sermon. We're asking no you to have a conversation. We're asking you to care enough about someone to have a conversation. And so for you, the, se the second week that you led Tanner was so much better because you thought of it that way. You're like, wait, all I'm doing is using these talking points and discussion questions to lead a conversation, right? Plain and simple. No, you're not going to get, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to get much more uh, simple in your life. Uh, um, it's just you use the template. The conversation ebbs and flows, and uh, and it, it just it gets nat it's even more natural. So let me make another confession, Eric. Yeah. Some of that might have been because, on occasion, in our mentoring relationship, I might have talked too much. I might have modeled oh. that I was trying to be the pastor and the teacher, and so that. So that's on me because I modeled something, probably not every topic, but on occasion, I probably modeled something that you felt like you had to fill the shoes of me as the pastor. And so keep that in mind, Eric, as you're mentoring Tanner, model a conversation. You're not trying to make the distance between you and Tanner seem like massive and large, like he'll never be able to do what you're doing. You're trying to make it sound like when you finally say, hey, who can you do this with? He's like, dude, I could. you make this look so easy because all we're doing is having a conversation. Okay? That's right. Hey, and if you are, if you if you have that. That spirit of making disciples and, and man, I we both pray. Uh, that that you have that spirit when someone says, hey, I can do what you do, your answer won't be no. Your answer won't be anything other than I hope you can. Yeah. Because it's not about them doing a better job. The conversation through Pursue God is always going to take a unique journey because it's being led by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit knows what's in our heart. It knows what we need. So if you, if I take this approach that, uh, oh, it's going to be this way every time, I'm setting myself for, up for failure. If some if my guy says to me, "Oh, I can't wait to do this," oh, I, uh, you know, I, I probably can do it as good as you. There's, there's no pride involved in this because it's about God. It's about telling people about Jesus. It's about strengthening their relationship, and ultimately helping them make disciples. And so, let me add, that's a good word, Eric. And let me add, add to that this thought: you can. You have discipled Tanner better than I could. And the reason for that is because you had you had time to do it. And that's one of the reasons you have to empower other people is because your heart and my heart and probably people watching this, their, their heart for the lost is so huge, which is great. So the best way that you can the best way that you can help the masses is by discipling someone and finishing the job with them, <laughs> you know, which means, you don't just engage them. You don't just establish them in the faith, but you empower them to go do it with somebody else. Because Eric, for you, let's look at these three E's again, because this really just dawned on me. Even though you you started with Tanner in the established phase, the second E, the truth, the truth of the matter is, to be honest with you, yeah. you, you actually started engaging him still. Because even though you were doing the pursuit with them, didn't you like go on hikes with them and started like engaging him just personally and, and being and relating to him and hanging out with them, right? We did. We did a Sunday morning before church. We jumped yeah. in and uh, went on a hike. And that's because, um, you know, I care about him and I care about 
Um, you know, I care. He's my brother. He's like my brother in Christ. Of course I care about him. <laughs> and uh, so how can I show my love to him, uh, my love for him? How can I show that I care? Hey, man, let's, let's do something that you want to do. Yeah, that's good. Well, and I and I'm you know what? I, I shouldn't have been surprised by it, but I was so happy when I heard you say that because I didn't tell you to do that. No. You just you loved you wanted to love him. And so, see, you to be honest, you were engaging with him at a different level than I was willing to do. Not if Tanner's watching this, not that I didn't want to do that. I just I can only really engage with so many people. Jesus didn't disciple thousands of people. He discipled 12 people. Yeah. You know, he didn't he and one of them was a dud. So he didn't disciple 12 or he didn't disciple the masses. You can't because you can't personally engage with the masses. And that's why Jesus said, we need to pray to the Lord of the harvest that that more workers go out into the field. And if you read that in Matthew 9, in Matthew 10, God answered their prayers by sending them. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to warn you if you're watching this. If you pray to God to reach the lost, he's going to send you. And so you should pray to God to reach the lost and then be ready to go make a disciple. And that's what the Pursue God tools are all about. So Eric, props to you for picking up on the second E with Tanner, but then backing in and engaging with him. And I know what you're going to do is even as, even when you're done with the pursuit, you're probably going to cover more topics with him. He's getting married soon. So you're going to actually kind of go back to that, to that first E with him in a sense, even as he goes off and, and disciples other people, you're going to still have a, I would expect you're going to have a relationship with him for years to come um, where you're even going to, in some cases, still continue to use some of those topics and disciple him using first God. For, for sure. You know, that time slot, a time slot, maybe, you know, maybe um, he feels it with somebody else. That's okay. But um, he knows where I live. I know where he lives. He has my phone number. I have his phone number. And um, we have we we were able to find similar interests during our time together. So let me ask this question. Let's let's we got a lot of ground to cover here. I want to, especially for the people watching this, I want to make sure we hit some things. Real, just real quick answer. Two minutes or less. Engage, establish, and power. Which one seems the most difficult to you? What would you say? Uh, engage, establish, and power. The most difficult one to me is always, is almost always um, engaging, yeah. because I've got to get some. I've got to get that hook in them, right? I'm, I'm for all my fishermen out there. Uh, I've got that lure. I'm throwing the lure out, and I'm, you know, maybe I'm jiggling it a little bit. I'm trying to get them to to bite, to engage. Hmm. Um, like we talked about, listen, don't be discouraged. It may not happen the first time you drop the form acronym. It may not get to M. It may not happen a year in my with my friends that I'm working on that aren't Christians. We're at uh, year two and a half. Mm -hmm. um, we're still working on it. So the engage, and again, I assume, I encourage I encourage you to be be mindful about your pursuit to engage that you that you pray about it that you um before like brian said before jesus sent out the 72 he said pray he didn't say send them out hey go use that form acronym uh hey, and, and you know when you get a break pray he they were intentional about being mindful and just laying everything out to the holy spirit Dear Lord, I don't know what your plan is for me today, um, but if, if if there's a need around me, Father, I pray that you would open my my heart and my eyes to whoever that may be. That simple. And it, it will. You, you expect. You look for God, I promise. You look for God when you pray that prayer for God to open your heart and your eyes to the needs around you. I promise he'll show you um, the, where the needs are. Yeah. And then engage people. So. Yeah, and by the way, people watching this this training video right now, you know the the title of this video is "Watch Me Disciple Eric." Obviously, you can tell that Eric and I are now 
not just in a discipling conversation, but we're speaking into your lives, which I'm glad we're doing this, Eric, because I think it's good for people to hear from you, um, not from just a pastor, but from you who's actually doing it, that it's, I love what you're saying, that it's, and I didn't put you up to any of this, that it's, it's just, it's, you're intentional about it and you're, you're ready to do it. So let's talk about these two steps. Cause again, I think people are, need to wrestle through these two steps and, and Eric, let me just remind you to do these two steps, to lead Tanner through these two steps, because even as I'm leading you through these two steps, I want to make sure that you're leading Tanner through these two steps. Anyone watching this training video, it's not on your pastor mm-hmm. to empower the person you're discipling. I want you to hear that. It's on, it's on, I don't mean to be mean about this. It's on you to empower the person you're discipling. Eric, it's on it's your responsibility to finish the job with Tanner, which means that you're going to be going through these two steps with Tanner. I'm not going to be going through them. You're going to be going through these two steps. And Tanner, if you're watching this video someday down the road, hopefully really soon, you're going to be going through these two steps with the person you're discipling. It's not going to be me or Eric doing it. It's going to be you doing it. So see, Eric, we're making everyone a disciple maker. And that's what these three E's are about. You engage them for a period of time covering topics that are interesting to them. When the time is right, and we've got other videos on this to how to know when the time is right. When the time is right, you start the pursuit with them. And that kind of gets you on that 12-week track that we're finishing up right now, Eric. But don't forget to finish the job, right? That you've got to empower them to take these two steps. Make a list of people who could use your help. Start praying for God to open the door to a mentoring relationship, which is what you were saying, Eric. Right. Yep. And then step two is once you've done that is then you pick a topic or category that would engage someone and send, send it out with a simple invitation to talk. Hmm. So Eric, I want you to be thinking about that. Tanner's already obviously on your list. You're discipling him. I know that your neighbor's on your list, right? So your neighbor's on the list and I know you're praying for your neighbor. That's right. So I guess the next question is take step two with your neighbor. What are some, what are some topics or categories that would engage your neighbor? In fact, maybe it would be good for us to do that right now. I think the best way to find topics is to go up on your page. And let's see. We're going to go way, way up to the top here. The you can also find it in the menu right there. The index is also in the menu. Okay. So let's go to the index. So let's do this for your neighbor. Okay. Okay. As I scroll through this, what are some categories that you think might be worth exploring and sharing with your neighbor? Okay. So uh, I know that um, he was raised in the church. Slow down on faith basics. Sorry. I know he was raised in the church, but uh, he either became too enlightened or or something where, you know, he he doesn't – maybe it just didn't – he never, uh, it was just, maybe it was just church on Sunday. That's all it was. But as it became older, um, he didn't, you know, he didn't need it. So maybe I could ask him about, um, you know, what he did ask me. I said, hey, his name's Brian. I said, hey, Brian, um, yeah, I'll, I'll come hang out with you after. We'll grill out after my um, online church service. And he goes, two weeks ago, he goes, you know what? I think if I went to church, I could go to church online huh okay um so maybe um maybe worship maybe um uh i yeah maybe worship yeah sure okay dig in brian worship so let's click on let's click on worship yep there's 23 topics to choose from and what i like to do is just kind of scroll through and say hey you know what this one might be the right one worship is not what you think that's right right yeah Let's see. God's invitation to intimacy, maybe not so much for a man, right? Not initially. But this one might be good. You will become what you worship. Yeah. Uh, it's about idolatry and idol worship. That's really relatable. So what I would do, Eric, here, this is what, and again, I encourage you to do it, but people watching this training video, like when I think about a person I'm trying to engage, like my UPS driver, I, I, I look at the resources like you just did, Eric. I look at the resources prayerfully with them in mind. 
and I pray that God would show me a topic that might land for them. And I and I'm not going to cram it down their throat, but then I would take I would let's say that we're going to pick this one. I take that topic. Usually I do this on my phone. I copy the URL and I just share it in a text with my UPS driver. I've done this for him with some of the men's topics, actually some of the fatherhood topics because he's a dad and that's what matters most in his life right now. So so I sent him some fatherhood topics and all and let me just go back to that to the point because I want to show you that I actually really do this. Yeah. So if you look at if you look at sorry, I lost it. Topic 12, okay. If you look at step two, pick a topic. Okay, so we picked that you are what you worship that would engage someone on your list and send it out. That means text or email or Facebook or whatever with a simple invitation to talk. And Eric, that's literally what I did for my UPS driver. I sent it out to him. I said, hey, I thought maybe this would be interesting. I thought you might you might get something. I watched this topic and I thought, Maybe you could get something from this. Check it out. And if you want to talk about it, let me know. I'll take you to lunch. That's it. I'm not going to force him into it. I'm not going to push too hard. But if I don't hear back from him, then I might send him another one two or three weeks later. The whole time I'm praying for him. The whole time I'm praying that God would use that. I like to think of these topics, Eric, like John the Baptist. John the Baptist went out before Jesus to prepare the way for Jesus. And so these topics go out and prepare the way for, for Eric, right? This topic could prepare the way for you to come in and, and eventually share Jesus with them, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. That prepare, preparing the way, you know, just, just being, being the vessel. So that's so that's question six here. Make a list of a few people who might be interested in going through a discipleship track with you or or even just a topic. Right. Mm. And begin praying for those people. Yeah. Um, so that's good. I think those again, we're just trying to keep it simple that there's a there's the strategy. It's a three E strategy. You engage for a period of time, which I agree with you, Eric. That's probably the hardest part for everybody. If it's hard for you and you're an extrovert, it's especially hard for introverts. Um, and that's where a pastor might help you get connected to someone who's asked for a mentor, right? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. D don't, um, if you're willing to disciple, if God puts, if God has put it on your heart to disciple and, or maybe, you, Hey, you know what? I know that I'm, you're convicted that you should be dis discipling, reach out to somebody, um, small group leaders, um, you know, uh, Maybe, hey, if you have kids and you drop off your kids, you check them in in the morning at Alpine and you see those nice people standing there with the lanyards around their neck. Hey, um, who can I talk to about um, like mentoring? Whatever it may be, any, almost anybody that if you're good, if you worship at Alpine, almost anybody that's got a name tag on can point you to somebody who can help you get into a mentoring relationship. Yeah, let me let me finish this one comment, Eric. That I that I'm glad you brought that up because let me just go back to the top of this page. So, you know, I've been discipling you, Eric, with the Alpine Church page as our home page. So, because Alpine Church is a Pursue God Network church, which means that that means that we have our own partner page right here on PursueGod.org. Oh. It looks a lot like the home page, but it's got a few things that I want to make sure you know about, Eric. And I want to make sure that you let Tanner know about and make sure that Tanner lets the next guy know about. And, and, it's, and it has to do with the three E's and it, and it has to do with tracking or logging these three milestones. So here we are on the Alpine Church page. And so anyone watching this who has a who goes to a church that's a partner church, then this is for you as well. Right? We've got partner churches around the country. So most of our partner churches have, have a little log form built into their page, okay? So look, when you start engaging someone in a pursuit of God, we call that milestone one because it's the first E. So Eric, when you start engaging someone for as long as you go to Alpine Church, when you start engaging a new person, we want our, your pastor at your church wants to know about it. And the way you tell them about it is when you start that new relationship, you fill out milestone number one, and you put your name there, your email address, the campus you attend, 
who you're mentoring, and you you pick the milestone. Milestone number one, engage, I just started mentoring. And what happens is when you fill this out and you submit this form, then it goes to uh, your pastor, Pastor Jared. Pastor Jared will get that form, and he knows now that you are going to his church and that you are now engaging someone. Maybe it's your neighbor. Maybe it's someone you met. Maybe it's someone else at church. And so he can give support and follow up for you. He can celebrate with you. He can urge you on as it, but he knows now, right? He knows now that you're, you've reached milestone number one. Now, when you've reached milestone number two, you're going to fill this out. You're going to say, Hey, I've just started the pursuit with this guy. So you're going to fill out milestone number two. So by the way, you should probably fill that out with for Tanner because I haven't filled that out yet for Tanner because I wanted to wait and let you do it. So when we're done today, I encourage you to go on there and fill out milestone number two and put your name in there, put your campus, put Tanner's name in there. The milestone is that you've, you're establishing him in the faith. And if you've got any other feedback about your mentoring relationship that would be helpful for your pastor. So this is the way that you can communicate with your pastor right through that. It's kind of hidden in there because we don't want people to find it. And, you know, it's kind of really for topic number 12. Like now we're really pulling the curtain back and we're saying to you, Eric, make sure you fill out those miles for a while. And then Eric and your pastor is going to go about it. Make sure that when you hit topic 12 with Tanner to let him know about it as well. Right? For sure. On that note, I'm going to fill out milestone number three. So why don't we go ahead and take the time to do it? Because I because I want to show you what's going to happen when we do this. So I'm going to put my name in here, Brian Dwyer. I'm going to put uh, my email address. Uh, let's see. I'm going to use my Flex Talk address. I'm going to put the campus. Now, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put your campus. So I'm going to put Layton. And if they don't have a campus... You, I guess you just pick one, right? You pick Layton, Layton because you go to Layton. Whom are you mentoring? I'm going to say Eric W. So recent milestone and uh, milestone three, we just finished the pursuit because c- congratulations, Eric, we're done now. All right, right on. Are you serving on a team? I'm not going to, I'm not going to put that one on there for now. And I'm going to put some feedback on there saying Eric is ready to go. Hmm. Now, what's going to happen is Jared is going to get that. Pastor Jared is going to get that. He's, you notice I didn't give him your email address. So he's going to reach out to me and he's going to say, hey, congrats. So you finished with Eric. So does that mean that if I've got people that need a mentor, that, that I can reach out to Eric for that? So see what that's going to do, Eric. Is it's going gonna, it's gonna to help me get you connected to someone else. And probably it's also going to get you connected to the pastor if you're not already. Now you are, but in the case with Tanner, when you fill that out with Tanner, then Jared's going to reach out to you and he's going to say, hey, congrats, man. That's awesome. Would it be helpful if I gave Tanner a phone call? So it's kind of a way to connect him into the church, right? Does that make a sense? Sure. Yeah. So message is that's a little tracking thing and just pay attention it only exists on your church's partner page so on pursuegut.org slash ac so that's why now i can really pull the curtain back that's why when i started discipling you i did it from this page because i wanted this to be our home base even though it has a lot of the same stuff that the front page has i wanted to make sure that when we got to topic 12 that I could show you about the log forms and all that stuff. But I'm excited, you know, I'm excited about you've, you've gotten to know me over the past 12 weeks. Yeah. Um, we didn't just talk about football. I don't think we talked about football one time uh, <laughs> or baseball. Uh, we're both baseball guys. Um, um, I'm excited. You know, I, I do, I do feel um, more empowered. Uh, yeah, I already do my quiet time, my Bible study. I, I already do that. But there still is something to be said with asking questions off of another person. You know, um, Proverbs is all about having wise counsel. 
And by talking with Brian, by having somebody that I can meet with, um, sometimes our topics, we've stayed on topic for the most part, but we have had other subjects that have come up during our time together. And I've been able to bounce them off my, my mentor. I've been able to mount, bounce them off Brian, and we've been able to talk about that. Um, so, I mean, that that's an added benefit of this, of the Pursue God platform of, of the relationship is um, I just have somebody else that that I'm that I'm speaking to that I'm I'm getting uh, advice that I'm getting wisdom from that I'm that I'm just taking this journey with, and that's what it's about. God doesn't call it God doesn't call us to do this journey, this life alone. Um, that's where He made us such uh, uh, creatures of 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 social networks. Mm-hmm. And, so I'm, I, I would tell, I would tell this to anybody and tell anybody about it. Yeah. And Eric, I'll say a lot of people say, so what's next? You know, people might be watching this saying, I'm really interested to see what happens next with Brian and Eric's relationship, because now, you know, I've empowered you and you're actually already discipling. So does that mean that I never talk to you again and we're done? No. So what happens now, there's a couple of things that can happen now. First of all is, as you're discipling, which is good, you and I might do some training topics together. Um, and so for people who are watching this, if you don't know how to find the training topics, you go up here to the menu and you it's a, it's a category. So you go to the training category. So Eric, you and I can spend some time, um, you know, for the next couple of weeks, hitting a couple of these training topics together. Um, you know, when how to make disciples when you can't meet face to face, you know, we might talk about the Holy Spirit. This is probably a good one for next week, Eric. We might talk about the Holy Spirit's role in disciple making. Um, so what 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 I like to do, and you might be doing with this with Tanner as well, is you do some training topics as you're trying to help him get ready to dis- actually start discipling someone. So that's one option for us as we move forward. Another option for us is maybe we go back to the first E, the engage. And even though we've already you've already been established, you've gone through the pursuit, you're ready to go. Maybe you even continue to disciple Tanner and some other people. But maybe you say, hey, Brian, I want to do a couple of topics on theology now. I've got some things I want to talk through. Can we can we go? Do you have a little more time to do some of that with me? We might do that now. But it might come to a point, Eric, where you're discipling so many people and I'm discipling so many people. We're both full circle followers of Jesus now that we get to the point where we're like, Hey, let's just meet maybe every month. Let's keep meeting once. A, let's touch base once a month. But let's not, you know, you're busy. I'm busy. We're not going to meet every week anymore. But let's still stay in touch. Let let's let's pick a topic and do a topic every month. And uh, so at some point, our relationship fa- sort of phases into what I would call a passive mentoring relationship. So Eric, we've been in an active mentoring relationship for the last few months. And some, some, at some point down the road, our, my mentoring relationship with you is going to go more passive, which means you're going to just kind of reach out to me when you need some encouragement and some help or to talk through a topic. But it's not necessarily going to be every week. Does that make sense? That's right. Uh, yeah, it makes, ton, it makes a ton of sense. Uh, or um, just like you, Brian, I love small groups and I love the, um, the group concept. I, I'm, I go to a um, my family we meet on Tuesday nights, um, online right now, of course. And then, uh, and I meet with guys on Monday, on sa- uh, Saturday morning at eight o'clock online, of course. But when we used to meet at, at McDonald's at eight and, uh, man, so I've taken some of the guys that I've talked with that I've done, done some topics with. And I said, Hey, you know, I know this guy and I got, I got this guy. Let's bring them together. And so, so either you join a small group, small group, or um, with you know with a little bit of instruction, you start another small group, and uh, that way this all continues. Um, it doesn't ever get like a the box doesn't ever get checked. So um, yeah, there there are so many ways to continue this, and I guess that small groups are such a good way too. Yeah, that's a good point. And let's close with that thought, because I, I do think some of you watching this, 
you've watched Eric and I in a mentoring relationship one-on-one, but in a small group, it works literally the exact same way. You pick a topic, you use the discussion questions. You And again, if in a small group, if you're like, I don't want this small group to just be a cul-de-sac where they just get together for 30 years and do Bible study. So how do you move them? I would call that getting stuck in the engage phase for 30 mm-hmm. years. You don't want that. How do you move someone out of the engage phase? Well, mm-hmm. take them through the pursuit. Because mm-hmm. when you take them through the pursuit, you're going to eventually get to topics 10, 11, and 12. And they're going to be watching this video saying, I want to be like Eric, and I want to go out there and start making disciples. And so, again, it's really simple. The way to move, when you're ready to move out of the engage phase, use the pursuit for that. By the time you get through these 12 topics, man, hopefully you'll be able to light a fire under them and get them out discipling someone else. And Eric, I think it's great that you're actively looking in that men's group to to connect person guy A with guy B and say, hey, why don't you mentor this guy? Why don't you do some topics with him? Why don't you engage with him outside of the men's group and eventually bring him through the pursuit? And then he can go do it with somebody else, right? Because everyone needs to go full circle. Everyone does. And Eric, I'm proud of you for doing it, for uh, being such an awesome student. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 4, he said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And they followed him. And so what did he do? He made them fishers of men. It's not that complicated. And I appreciate that you have not complicated it. And I hope you don't complicate it with Tanner. And I hope Tanner doesn't complicate it with the next guy that he disciples. And let's just see the whole generation reached in about 10 years. Right on. Thanks, Brian.